Welcome everybody to On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is November 22nd. It is Wednesday. Now tomorrow, being Thursday, I would normally have a live streaming event, but because it's Thanksgiving, I'm not going to be there and I'm not expecting you to be there either, but I will have a live streaming event next week. Now what I do on this show is I basically share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. Those are stocks under five bucks and they can be found on the major exchange and the OTC. Now, when I find hot penny stocks, I'm normally looking at the charts. I spend a lot of time looking at charts and it's real easy to tell if a chart has heat. Just at a glance, you can see if volume's coming in. You can see if the price is cutting through a strong SMA. At a quick glance, you can see if every technical is going to the moon. Heat is easy to see in the charts. Trying to find heat in press releases, that takes some talent and I'm not that good. So I find most of my hot stocks by looking at the charts first. When I find a hot chart, then I go taking the time to look through the press releases and the filings. When I find a hot piece of news to match my hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you regularly. And I've got some to share with you today. But before we go there, I want to share a little information with you about the OTC markets. This site I've been using for many a years. They've got lots of information here and I only share some of what it can do with you. I'm going to point out two things right now just so you can add it to your arsenal. Let's say that you want to invest in some cannabis stocks, but you have no idea what good cannabis companies are. Well, you can come over here and they've got a list. Right there is OTCQX Cannabis. These are all the cannabis companies on the QX tier of the OTC. The QX is the best tier. They audit their financials. They give you a ton of filings. Matter of fact, they could easily be on the major exchange with as much information as they give you. And right here is a list of some of the best cannabis stocks that you're going to find around. And you know you can trust these companies. The other piece of information I want to share with you is crucial. I love what I'm going to share with you here, folks, and I have not found this anywhere else online. So to me, this is a private gold mine I'm sharing with you right now. Come up here to market activity, click current market. It's going to bring you to this page. This shows you the stocks that have had the most activity on the entire OTC market, all 12,200 stocks. What we're focusing in on are the advancers. I want to look at all the stocks, so I click that all right there and then click more. This will dedicate the whole page to only the gainers on the OTC market today. And it starts off with the biggest gainers at the top and goes all the way down. So FRAZ was the biggest gainer out of all 12,200 stocks. Now, just so you know, anything with a double black diamond is on the expert market. So you and I can't trade those, so don't worry about those. Now here's the information. Trades, right there folks. You've got your symbol the price, the change, the percentage of gains, dollar volume, how much dollar volume they've actually done. You don't find that in a lot of places. Share volume. Most people are watching share volume. But what does that really mean? If you see a stock does 50 million shares, whoa, you're excited. That's a lot of shares. What if it was only one person that bought it? Are they going to buy more? No, you could be sitting there all day waiting for the next buy. To me, it's more important to know how many people are trading. Now, they don't actually tell you how many people, but they do tell you how many trades. So I can figure one trade is one person. No argument there, right? <laughs> two trades could be two people or it could be one person making two trades. Well, I'm looking for big numbers here. So I just scroll down and this will just go down and down and down. And I'm really looking for numbers in the triple digits now. We used to have digits going into the thousands, not here recently. So here's one with 155 trades. That could be 155 people. It could be, if each person made two trades, 75 people. In either case, that's a heck of a lot more than one and two. That's a crowd of people. You can find bigger crowds by just scrolling down. Here's 337, A-R-T-H. 493 trades. Oh, double diamond. We're not interested. Stahl. We've talked about Stahl a lot. She did 41 million shares today and had 689 trades. That's a crowd of people. That's where you're going to get your price action. 
you're not going to get any price action with one or two trades, one or two people, right? But you don't know how many trades. All you can see is share volume. So come on over here, folks. This information is updated every 15 minutes on the OTC market. All right, I think you've got some extra ammo to work with now. Now I'm going to share some hot OTC penny stocks with you. First stock up on the chopping block is ticker ITRM, Interim Therapeutics. Now I'll be the first to admit the chart is a rocket stock. There ain't no breaking out. She took off when the financials came out on the 14th. Now here's the interesting thing. This is a R&D, research and development biotech company, meaning they're not making any money yet. And you wouldn't think a financial would be all that exciting with a research and development company, but honestly, their financials are more important than companies making money because they got to survive. They've got to keep business going without any revenues coming in. And theirs are pretty good. But more importantly, in their financial news press that came out, they told us about their phase three trial they're entering right now. And they gave us three catalysts with very defined windows of opportunity. And that's what I think people like. So ITRM, she finished today at $2.07 with just over 21% gains. And like most of the stocks we've been looking at, she too is on the NASDAQ, which means you can trade this for free. There's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks, even if they're penny stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is ITRM about? Well, they tell us here the company is a clinical stage pharmaceutical company dedicated to developing differentiated anti-infectives aimed at combating the global crisis of multi-drug resistant pathogens to significantly improve the lives of people affected by serious and life-threatening diseases around the world. The company is currently advancing its first compound, Celepinum a novel penum anti-infective compound in phase three clinical development with an oral formulation and is also available in a intravenous formulation. Now, just a quick briefing here about the phase three trial. There are three trials that the company has to take their drugs through to get ultimately approved. Phase one, pretty quick, this is for safety. Can you take the drug and not die? <laughs> Does it create any toxicity in you? If you get through phase one, you go to phase two for efficacy. How well does your drug work for what you say it does? And phase three, that is normally a very long phase trial because you are pitting your drug up against every competitor out there and they're looking for the top dog. However, if you're like this company creating drugs that are meeting unmet needs, meaning there's no competitors out there, you can get through phase three really quick. And that's when you get your drug on the market and start making strong revenues. They tell us here that the Celepinum has demonstrated potent in vitro activity against a wide variety of bacteria resistant to other antibiotics. Interium has received qualified infectious disease product and fast track designations for its oral and IV formulations of Celepinum in seven indicators, including urinary tract infections, which is really where they're focused on right now, as you're going to see in the news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, that's a nice increase. It is almost 700% increase going from 111,000 up to 717,000. Share structure. Oh, that's not bad. We don't get a lot of information here, but it's enough to let us know we've got a decent float. Outstanding share count is only at 13 million and our float is never above the outstanding share count. So it's going to be below 13 million, maybe a lot. Market cap for the company, we're at 22 million. Financials, well, you already know they're a research and development company, haven't got any products, so they haven't got any revenues. Not annually, not quarterly, but they do have a balance sheet. Looking at their cash and cash equivalents, they've got about $14 million. We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on any of these charts. Total assets for the company, we got about $51 million and total liabilities is less. We're down here at about $44 million. That's rare. A lot of these research and development companies have got a lot more debt than assets. So our stockholder equity is a positive $7.1 million. 
That's a pretty decent R&D company as far as I'm concerned. Disclosures? We do have some current disclosures over here. We've got their most recent financial, which came out on the 14th. That's what caused the stock to run on the charts. We've also got an 8K that correlates to those financials. And then we've got a Form 4 here that just came out the other day. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. Now, they can do this in a lot of different ways, but we're interested in when they buy them and sell them. This was a purchase by a head honcho. The chief executive officer purchased 10,000 shares on the 20th of November at $1.58. Now, normally, I always come to the conclusion they know something that we don't. But the fact of the matter is, we do know what's going on here because he's already told us in the news press. Now, we've got two pieces of news over here, but we're going to get two birds with one stone because they talk about this in this news press. Interium Therapeutics announces completion of enrollment and its reassure phase three clinical trial of oral celepinum in the uncomplicated urinary tract infections. So jumping into this piece of news right here to get all the information. They tell us that last month, we completed the enrollment of 2,229 patients in our reassure trial in a 12 month period and expect to report top line data early in the first quarter of 2024. There's our first catalyst with a very defined window of opportunity. Subject to our analysis of the data, we plan to resubmit our NDA new drug application for the treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infections in the second quarter of 2024. There's your second window of opportunity. And expect the FDA to have completed its review of the NDA in the fourth quarter of 2024. Here's number three. If approved, oral celepinum will be the first oral penum available in the United States and the first treatment approved in the U.S. for urinary tract infections since the turn of the century. That's pretty exciting news right there, folks. Now let's take a look at their financials. We've got some bullets here. Keep in mind, they don't have any revenues coming in. Cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments totaled out to $35.9 million. That's money that they've got to work with. And they told us somewhere that that, there it is, will be sufficient to fund its operations until the third quarter of 2024. So basically, we've got a year's worth of money here. We don't have to worry about a public offering for at least a year. Research and development expenses for the third quarter jumped over $10 million from $4.4 million to $14.9 million. The increase for the three-month period was primarily due to the increase in costs incurred supporting the Reassure trial, which began a year ago in October and just ended this October. Now, we're not saying the trial ended. Getting all their patients so that they can do the trial just ended. It took them a year to get 2,200 people. Now, it costs a lot of money to do these trials. It can cost you a million dollars or more a month. Plus, you've got to pay every single person that is participating. And they've got over 2,200 people. So they've got all that money going out. But it's more of an investment than an expense. They get through this phase three trial and complete it. They're going to be on their way to making some good revenues. Now, this last piece of information kind of balances off that huge extra investment. Net loss for the third quarter of 2023 was just under $4 million compared to a net loss a year ago of almost $30 million. Folks, we are saving $26 million right there in net losses. So we may have put out $10 million here, but that, in my books, puts us up about $13 million. Now, it's not actually money in the bank, but it's money they didn't have to spend, so they're still hanging on to it. So in my views, their financials look good. This phase three trial is exciting because as far as I have seen, there are no other companies that have a drug like this, fighting urinary tract infections. What, what did they say since the turn of the century? Now, I've got to presume he's referring to the turn of the century from the 19th to the 20th, not the 20th to the 21st. That's just a presumption, though. So, let's go take a look at this rocket chart and see if she has any more to give by chart standards. Oh, the devil would love this chart. It is wicked hot. 
This is Interim Therapeutics, ticker ITRM. This is a six month, four hour view. As you can see, she was going sideways for a long time. Then here in July, she took a dip, falling down to this low bubble of 62 cents, which she hit at the end of October. She slowly worked her way off of that low bubble and then ripped up to a high that she hit today of $2.13. Right there, you've got over 300% run. Now, she broke out on the 14th, as I said, when those financials came out. She jumped from on top of the 50 to on top of the 200 and has been climbing ever since. And you can see she isn't paying heed to any other SMA, only the nine-day SMA, and she is sitting right on top of it. And what happened when she pulled away from it? She came back to it. So whenever you see the price start pulling away, like right now, it's way up here, chances are it's going to come back down to that nine-day SMA. But she is on an uptrend. There's no doubt about that. All of our SMAs have just crossed the 200, are nicely combed and evenly spaced, looking really fine. Look at our volume. Since the financials came out, the volume has just been tremendous and it is continually growing. Oscillators, all of them are going to the moon. Every single one of them is pushing up. You can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are pushing up. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on here until the financials came out. That's it, right there, the 14th. She jumped that day, got on her nine day. We did have a buckle here. This was three days ago. She came down when on our four hour chart. We saw that she got too far away from the nine day. Well, that's what it looks like on the hour chart. She came down, crushed this 20 day SMA with a rubber ball bounce. You know what a rubber ball does in the water. Goes under the water and comes right back up real quick. Normally pops out of the water. Boink. And that's what we had here. A pop out of the water. Came back down. Bounced off the 20. Landed on the 9 day. And she's climbing again. Looking really smooth here. Again, all of our SMAs look nice. Even our 200 is now sloping up. Our oscillators are still burning up, folks. They are ripping it. <sighs> I am loving these charts. All of them look good to me, folks. Five day, five minute. Another beautiful chart. Got a low bubble in this corner, 76 cents. High bubble in that corner. That's exactly what you want. 76 to 213. Steady uptrend. She came down one time really hard. Look at the way she laid on that 200. Came underneath it barely and then took off. Fell back down showing total respect for the 200. Slammed it, bounced up, got on top of that 50, and now she's paying heed to the 50. Whenever she dips on the five minute chart, she's coming down to the 50 for the most part. Oscillators. Our PPO is climbing up. She came down a little bit. Our MACD is pushing away hard from the signal line with lots of green bars accumulating, and our RSI is pulling back just a little bit. But as you can see, even after market hours, she is still climbing. We've got four bars here. Each bar is low, is higher than the one before. It's looking picture perfect, folks. I'm liking ITRM. She's not making any money, but we've got three catalysts with well-defined windows of opportunity, and her financials are not bad. She's going to be able to support herself for the next year without any public offerings. That's the way I read it. Sounds good to me. I'm going to be putting ITRM on my watch list. I'd advise you do the same. Got another penny stock from the NASDAQ for you. This is Oblong, ticker OBLG. Now, the primary reason we're looking at this stock is the chart. It is an atypical breakout chart that is hotly set up for a breakout. Now, when you have that sort of chart, you don't have to have a huge, big, hot catalyst. A small catalyst, even a stale catalyst, can get a chart like this to move. And we do have a catalyst. It's not a huge one, but a lot of stocks are running on it. Financials. Hers aren't bad. They're not superb. They're not outstanding, but they're not bad. And I think it's enough to get this stock to break out. And remember, folks, the early bird catches the worm. So Oblong finished today just a little over 21 cents and just a little over 8% gains. So what does Oblong do? Well, jumping into the most recent press release, the company provides innovative and patented technologies that change the way people work, create, and communicate. Oblong's flagship product, 
Mezzanine is a remote meeting technology platform that offers simultaneous content sharing to achieve situational awareness for both in-room and remote collaborators. Oblong supplies Mezzanine systems to Fortune 500 and enterprise customers. So they got big clients. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Uh, she's down a little bit, dropping about a half a million shares, going from 4.1 million down to 3.5 million. Share structure for OBLG. Well, look at that. We've got ourselves a super low float. Not that I really know what the float is, but our outstanding share count is only 2.9 million. And we know the float is never higher than the outstanding share count. So at worst, we've got a float of 3 million. Well, actually 2.9 million. What's really bad here, though, is that market cap. We're at 572,000 on the NASDAQ. That ain't going to cut it. They've got minimum criterias for everything on the major exchanges, including the market cap, and they're going to have to get that up. I don't know where, but they've got to get it up. Now, a market cap is figured out by taking the price and multiplying that times the outstanding share count. Well, both are real low numbers right now. So the only way to fix it is to either bid that price up, that's on us, or to put more shares out in a public offering, that's on the company. The other problem here is that price. It's under a dollar. The NASDAQ has a minimum bid price requirement. You can't go under a dollar and stay there for too long. If you do, they'll throw you off down to the OTC market. And there's only two ways to fix that. We, the investors, either have to bid that price up or the company does a reverse split. So we've got a lot of hot water here, but the fact remains, we're day traders. We're looking at the chart as it sits right now. We're looking at this for the next day, two, three days. I don't see any filings that say she's getting kicked off of the major exchange down to the OTC tomorrow or next week. So I don't think we have any problems right now. Taking a look at those financials. Well, a few years ago, she was doing pretty good, 12 and 15 million. But the last two years, she has been falling in revenues fast, coming down to 7.7 .7 and then dropping down to 5.4 in 22. She did get to keep 1.5 million of that, thank God. Taking a look at the quarterlies. Well, the last four quarters here, she was over a million. June of 2023, they were under a million. Still taking profits, but they're making less and less revenues. Looking at that balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalents in the bank, they've got about $7 million. Total assets is $8.8 .8 million. Total liabilities is only $1.2. So our shareholder equity is $7.6 million. We're not in bad shape over here. Disclosures for the company. Well, there you go. The most recent financial and that 8K that always goes with it. Outside of that, we really don't have anything else here to look at, but we do have the financials to consider, and we're going to look at that from the news vantage point. And there is no other news. This is the only piece of news that they've got is the financials. So they tell us here, over the past year, we believe the company has diligently optimized its operations, enhanced its efficiency, and streamlined expenditures to position itself as a lean, agile innovator in the tech landscape. In a pivotal move six months ago, Oblong raised $6 million in funding that we believe has fortified its balance sheet, providing the company with ample liquidity and clear runway through mid-2025. Sounds to me like they're saying we're not going to need to do any public offerings until mid-2025. Well, that's for money. They don't need the money, but they do need to get that market cap up. Something's got to give here. Now, let's take a look at some of these bullets for their financials because this is the catalyst as far as I'm concerned. As of September 30th, 2023, the company had $6.8 million of cash and no debt. That's a great thing. Total revenue was $0.9 million for the third quarter of 2023 versus $1.2 million a year ago. So that means their revenues were down about $300,000, which is about 25% of their revenues. But look at the next line. 
net loss of 0.9 million for the third quarter of 2023 compared to a net loss of 7.2 million last year. They have got $6 million that they were able to keep and not get rid of. Yeah, they may have lost $300,000 on their revenues, but in net loss, they gained $6 million. It definitely helps on the finances. Now, as I said, it's not a big catalyst, but it's good. It's not bad. And the chart is set up for a breakout and you don't need a big catalyst. You just need a catalyst. When you're standing on the ledge, real close to the edge, how much of a push does it take to throw you over? Not much. That's why you don't want anybody near you. Get away from me. Don't back up when you say that. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that chart now. You can see how it's just squeaking in there right now. This is Oblong, ticker OBLG. That's a six month, four hour view. We've got our high back in April of $4.90 where she ripped from $1.30 up to $4.90. That was a 300% run there roughly. Bounced again with a 200% run and then ultimately crashed through the 200. Coming down to our low here at the start of November of 14 cents. Now we had another big bounce right here. This one is actually 400%. This jumped from 35 cents to a buck 50. That was October 13th. Now it looks like it's a directional intentional spike. These are what I look for just before a stock breaks out, but it isn't. I'll tell you why. It looks perfect. You've got this big green bar going right up to the 200 day SMA and then it spit out this long wick over the 200 way above it. That is perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. And then I fully expect it to come back down and that is good. What it can't do is come down any lower than where it started from. This started right here and it fell down to there. That nullified the whole thing. See, when this spike goes up so high, it actually has a string attached to this 200 day SMA and all the other SMAs. And the higher it goes, the higher it tugs these SMAs. But when it comes down lower than where it pulled, it just doesn't work. Everything just falls apart. So I've noticed. And you can see she went right back to falling, hitting that low bubble, bouncing off of it getting on top of her 50 and that's where she stuck right there on her 50. And as soon as that 200 got close, we had a hiccup, hiccup, <laughs> jumped, got close to it, showing you some initiative. Now she is bouncing right there. That is a bounce off of the 50. She's floating now up over the 20, up onto our nine and everything is starting to turn up. Our 200 haul, 50, 29, all ultimately going towards that 200. It's going to be golden cross heaven and it's going to be a breakout folks, even with a small catalyst. We've got strong volume the last four days. The six days before that were stronger than the days before that. So we do have this tier growth in our volume. Oscillators, as you can see, they are pushing up. Not great, not fast, but they're not falling. Our PPO is climbing. Our MACD is climbing. Our RSI is just leveled off. Everything looks okay. Looks like it has a lot of potential to me. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour view. All right, I see a line here. I'm gonna draw it right there. Do I got my, there we go. All right, so this is where she has been working. She started right here fell down to this low bubble, came up, fought that support resistance area, fell back down to her 200, really struggled here and then ripped. She jumped here from 15 cents up to 24 cents, then came back down almost touching the 200. That does make a difference. If she had to slam into it, it means she was kind of heavy, but here she was light enough to actually stop herself and then pick herself back up. She got up on the 20, you can see she paid a lot of heed to that 20, rode it straight across and then bounced off of that market open. And we climbed here from about 18 cents to 24 cents, falling back to about 21 cents right now. After market, she looks like she is falling, but it looks like she's still over the nine. All of our SMAs are over the 200, but there's a little mix up in there. We need our 20 to be on top of the 50. You can see the 50s coming down, 20s coming up. They're going to cross and put themselves in the proper position. So that looks okay. Our oscillators. Well, our PPO is still growing. MACD's on the right side of the line. It isn't growing, but it isn't falling. 
and our RSI is actually growing, pushing up, though it doesn't look like it on the charts. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute, lots of volatility. She's down here on her 200, fell under it. She got down to a low of 15 cents here, and even though she was on the 200 here, she didn't like being under it. Once she got up on top of it, look at that rip. She jumped all the way up to here, then fell before the market even opened, down through the 200, took a full day and a half to get back up, and right now it looks like she's coming down to the 200 again. The five-minute chart doesn't look easily readable. It doesn't show the potential that our four-hour chart shows. You can see there, folks, even there, you can see that bottom line is about ready to cross that line right there. No doubt about it. Absolutely, positively, this is looking like it is going to go, even though we've only got a small catalyst. Now, you can do, go do some more due diligence if you like, but there's not a whole lot more to know, except they've got a lot of hot water they're going to be dealing with here. So, I would only think of this as a day trade. I would not consider getting into this for a long swing or even worse yet, a long hold. Not at this point of the game. All right, folks, because it is uh, Wednesday night, tomorrow's the holidays, we're doing a lot of prepping tonight, getting things ready for tomorrow, so I'm going to cut this short. I'm going to give you only two stocks, but I did, did give you a little bit of extra meat at the beginning. Hopefully, you can make yourself a nice sandwich with that, although don't let it ruin your appetite for the holidays. It's been nice sharing my time with you. Thanks for stopping in. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.